In this video, I'll show you how to create a pair of 3D animated wings in After Effects using Freeform Pro. I'm actually going to show you how I did this wing in a new composition. So I have these Rocket D comps, and these actually hold the different wing files. So I'm going to grab the wing left composition and just drop it in here. Now, I can go into Custom View. Now, I'm going to just set up a camera really quick. New camera. And I want it to have a fairly, just for my purposes, I want it to have a fairly long lens, not a wide lens, long one. So 25 is good. Okay. And it's going to tell you it doesn't have a 3D layer, but we're not going to worry about that right now because it will soon be 3D. I'm going to go to Effect, select that layer, Metal, Freeform Pro. Okay. Now that it's Freeform Pro, when I move this camera around, I can interact with this layer three-dimensionally. You don't have to set up your navigation camera right away. I put that in because I had the character already built up, okay? So initially what you get is a flat three-dimensional object, okay? Just like After Effects does by default. The only difference is it actually has a bit of thickness to it, okay? The way we start to actually deform this object is by creating a grid. So we start, let's edit the grid here. I don't really want to bend it down the middle I don't want columns, I just want rows for this guy. So we'll put this down to one. And I'm going to put four. I don't want that many because the more I have, the more I have to move, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is just set up the actual rotation of the wing flapping up and down. And we'll do this over the course of 15 frames. I'm gonna to go to the 3D transform and just quickly show you here, if I actually rotate, it's rotating on the middle of the actual layer and I need to change that, okay? So what I can do with that is move the anchor point. Now, this is, can be a little bit sensitive. So if you want, hold down the control button and slide, and that will b make it be a little less responsive. I'm going to shift the object up to the middle of the composition. And then let's just try rotating it again. There we go. That's a lot more where I want the actual pivot. So now what I can do is just reposition it down. And if I reposition it, you see this value of the anchor here is 920. So if I bring this also to 920, that will return the object to where it was while maintaining the anchor offset. So when I rotate it again, I still get the nice wing flap. Perfect. Okay, so the next step is let's create a little bit of up and down animation of the wing. So I'm gonna go into the rotation X value and keyframe it here, and then press U on my timeline here. Now you don't need to have all these visible, but uh, After Effects loves to show them when you press U. So just don't worry about them right now. So we're gonna go to frame 10 and I'll set this one here. Okay, and then on frame five, we'll make the wing all the way down. So I'm gonna rotate this all the way down. There we go. Well, I guess I could bring it all the way to 180. So we'll go all the way down and then all the way up. And I'm not going to put eases or anything like that in right now. So then now what I wanna do is my breakdown positions. Pull this camera out a little bit. So when this wing is halfway, which is about here, uh, maybe what we'll do is add a frame to this so we'll add one frame there, one frame here, and what that'll give me is a nice center breakdown here. So basic animation school stuff. I should have done that right off the bat. Okay, so we have a nice little breakdown here. Now the wing actually needs to bend in the middle to make this happen. So what I need to do is actually keyframe the mesh distortion up here. Okay, and what that's going to do is set a key for the mesh distortion. And I'm going to key that in all the all the main spots. I do all this right away because I that gives me reset values so that when the mesh is completely flat, it's going to be flat at these points here, okay? So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to do a little breakdown frames. And I'll do that by selecting these guys here and then just manually manipulating them. I'm setting the manipulation to Z only. I think Z only is the one I want. There we go. And this will pull it up. The reason I do Z only is it just makes it so if I have all of them selected and I move this up, I can end up moving it all over the place and it may look good at this angle, but when I rotate around, I may realize that I've pulled this back a whole bunch or moved it the wrong way. I personally like to lock down and just move it, move it one thing at a time. You may be wondering, why is it moving up on the Z axis? Well, because the Z actually refers to the object's orientation to itself, not how it is in space. Okay, so you're moving it in to the actual layer. So if you're up here, 
Z actually makes a whole lot of sense because you're moving it in. The wings down here, move this camera down, move it over a little bit, rotate around. And let's just bring that, I'm going to bring this wing up here. And I'll bring this one a little more up. And I'm just shift selecting. And actually, let's, now you can see it's actually looking really wavy right now. Don't worry about it right now. It's not, it's not the, I'll show you how to fix that in two seconds. Just want to get this a, a nice curve on the actual thing here. And I want to affect the whole wing. Okay, and just move your, don't, don't be shy. Move your camera around as much as you can. Get a sense of what's going on. I think I might have done a weird angle here. Yeah, okay. I missed this guy a bit. There we go. Okay. Now, you see how it's kind of stair-stepping? Well, what you need to do to fix that is put on auto tangents. Now, you could manually do each one. You could manipulate these, and that would straighten out each one. But I find that takes a little too long. So I just enable auto tangents, and that smooths out that curve for you automatically, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm going to move this up even further. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on my Y. I'm just going to move my Y positioning. So I'm going to do Y only. Let's select these two. I'm going to try to make this at a better angle for you. And that will let me pull this back. Give me a little bit more of the actual size without stretching the wing, because I've sort of stretched the wing a little bit. And I want this bend. Don't worry about making things exact. All of this... Everything in animation is about optical illusions. It's not about absolutes at all. It's really what you can get away with using illusions. So really what we want here is a nice bend. It doesn't really matter how you get to that bend, what you do to make that happen. What matters is that it just looks like it. And I mean, you don't, you could, there are other ways to achieve this. They're not as easy, but you can achieve this with, through other means. Um, as long as your camera's not moving around. The only reason I really wanted to use this is because I can move my camera around the bird a little bit and add a lot more depth and actually give curve to the surface. So as you can see, we have a nice curve on that wing. Because I keyframed the mesh, it actually goes back to the zero point. Maybe I'll zoom out a bit so it's not so hard to see what's going on here. All right, so you can see the wing's actually flattened out all by itself. So on this one, the wing's actually coming up, so I need it to bend the opposite direction. We're going to set this back to Z only. Oh, it's already there, so I'm going to pull this way down. I'm going to do this one. I'm holding the shift button down, holding shift, still holding shift as I click. Okay, let's see how that's doing. Let's do a little more. Pull that down. Bum, bum, bum. Pull that down even further. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one there. Whoa, dangerous. Okay, grab those two. Shift, pull, there we go. I really want a nice slope on this. Pull that down, awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to do the Y axis to Y only. Because right now that wing is way stretched out into the into space, and I want it to come back. I want it more back like that. Holding shift. And there we go. Okay, I think that wing is looking pretty good. Uh, that might be a little too extreme. Actually, this one should come in a bit. There we go. Okay. Now what you'll see is as the wing flaps, hopefully this makes sense, you can see that the wing is moving a lot more realistically. So it goes down and then it comes up and it's bending properly. So we already have a wing happening here. Now if you want to do eases, you can go on the rotation and press F9 and that will give you, oh wait, don't do it in the middle. You just want your eases on the every other frame where it actually comes this, because the wing doesn't slow down here. It's at its fastest, and then it would slow down here. So this is, you might want your eases on the ups and downs. So let me just 
create the loop. And this is how I made my loop is I actually just animated it and I just watched it over and over and I worked with it this way. Now this is happening a bit fast. I might want to see this in more of a slow motion. So what I can do is alt click, select all of these, these keyframes, hold down alt and then drag this out. I might drag this out to a full second. Okay. And then what I need to do is I just need to realign a couple of the frames and make sure they fit properly. Let's go to a minute uh, or second five. We have there, we'll put that, that at nine seconds. So naturally this should be at 18. There we go. I sometimes you have to realign them because I, I don't want all my key because you can actually work in between keyframes and after effects and that can be a little bit crazy. After 18 so it should be 26. There we go. We should be here. And then eight after that is 34, I believe. So 104. There we go. Okay, so that'll slow the wing down. So now we can watch that in a little bit more of a manageable speed. There, we're getting a nice bend and fold in that wing there. Actually, I think that's quite nice. You could, if you want, you could do your eases on this as well. So you could do an ease there and just see how that changes things. The other thing you can do, which I usually save till a little bit later, is you offset these a little bit. So as the wing is coming down, uh, actually, I offset it the wrong way. You want to offset a few frames over this way. I don't know how many. It's really up to you to experiment. But what you can do with that is it actually gives more of a rubberiness to the wing. So depending on how how much you offset that, what it'll do is the wing will look weaker and or ru more rubbery. So a, a wing, a bird's wing actually has quite a bit of bone in it, and the feathers are actually quite stiff. So it probably wouldn't be that rubbery. So I might just offset it a couple of frames. Now you want to be careful with how you offset things because you're going to need to loop all this stuff and make it manageable. So you really want to be mindful of that. And I'll explain that to you in a second. So there we go. And we're coming up. I think that's pretty good. So that is one flap. So what I'll do is I'm going to stick a keyframe here and stick a keyframe here. And then that keyframe over here, I can just remove it. And I just jump back to that frame. So now I have this contained flap cycle, okay, which can then be duplicated relatively easily. Okay, so right now we have a pretty sweet looking wing already. The other thing about a wing is it doesn't just flap up and down with a bird. This would probably be more of a slow flying bird. But with actual birds, there's a little bit more direction happening. So there's one more level of rotation, and it's actually on the, it probably would be on the, I think, the Z axis. I think it's the Z. So I'm just going to check here. Just trying to figure this out. And again, I you really got to watch. You really have to watch some birds in slow motion because it will help you understand what actually happens because this may look right to your brain, but there, we're actually missing some very key rotations that actually happen with a bird, an actual flying bird. But we did get a nice up and down movement there, and you could stop there depending on the nature of your project. Okay. Actual birds when they're flying, at least the at least the chickadee that I that I was watching is when they bring their wing down initially there's a little bit of a rotation right here at this point there's a rotation this way which is creating some lift okay and then the rotation turns back to zero here well it doesn't have to turn back to zero but I put it back to zero and then when it comes up again I can't remember exactly the rotation, but I put it this way a little bit. So it goes down, and then it's pulling up, trying to reduce the drag on the on when the wing is actually coming up. And you can see I didn't set a zero frame, so I'm just selecting this frame, copying and pasting it. Okay. Now I have a lot of little ease ins and ease outs, which is appropriate for this. Actually, it's and if you want to get rid of those, you can just press click the frame or press Control. So it comes down and then up. And then the other thing that happens is when the wing's coming up, it doesn't keep its wing fully out like this because that creates a tremendous amount of drag, which would actually push the bird down. So there's actually something really interesting that happens with the bird's wing is 
it collapses in more. So let's let's actually go in here and fix that. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm just going to take this this again, and we'll do the Z. Oops, I think we're on. We want to do Y here. So we're going to bring in the Y and fold this wing in more. And I'm just doing it, making sure that I'm doing it on my mesh distortion keyframes because I don't want to be adding new keyframes at this point. I try to work with as few keyframes as possible in the very beginning. It just makes it easier for me. I'm not a particularly good animator, so if I have too many keyframes, it really messes me up. Okay, and then the other thing that happens is birds tend to fold the wing up a little bit, like fold it together. So on this, when the wing is actually coming up, so you can see from the front it's folded nicely, that's great. But the other thing that's not, oh, uh, you know what we could do? Maybe we should, actually I want to bring this in a little bit. I'm going to select all of these guys. If you press Control and Shift together, you can create a selection box like that. So that speeds things up a little bit. And then I'm going to hold Shift down. I'm going to bring the whole wing in a little bit. There we go. So now the wing is folding up nicely and coming in. And there's really going to be a full wing coming down and then a nicely folded up wing coming up to create less drag. So the other thing that happens is on this fold up here, the wing actually comes folds back a little bit. So I'm just going to try to position this camera a bit better. Kind of tumbled weird moment. I want this sort of straight. There we go. I'm going to control, just select that. And I want to move on, I believe, on the X only. And making sure I'm still on that mesh distortion keyframe layer right there. And then I'm going to pull these back. I'm going to try to create a fold right at that elbow, that finger joint up here where the feathers go. I'm just going to create a fold here. Whoops. Okay. And pull that back. And then, just so it's not so distorted, I'll move it back up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now what's going to happen is the wing is actually tucking back a little bit as it folds up. It's tucking in and then coming up. This isn't going to look perfect. I spent a lot of time looking at the bird feather thing, and I might even have a few things wrong here. I'm just kind of riffing. Uh, and just trying to remember what I saw, not looking at it at the moment. And actually, it rotating back like that doesn't make any sense. So in the Y axis, I think we have it rotating here. So let's do rotation Y, and I just I might want to fix that. Actually, rotation Y, I might want to fix that to be more like that. So forward, up. Now let's just see how it looks. We'll do a quick render. I'm going to try to find a nice position to look at this in. It's not moving perfectly. Like this part here is a little bit annoying me because that's happening a little too soon. So I might just drag this a little bit later. Let's have a look. I may also be too extreme on this, but as you can see in the chickadee that I did, I did manage to get it to look good, or good enough anyways. Okay, so I'm looking at it from the front. Looks pretty good. Let's look at it from the side, where, which is the main thing we're going to be doing from is actually looking at it from the side. So that's where we really want it to shine. I think if I want to sell that crunching up of the wing here, I may need to rotate this even more on the y-axis to be this way. So it comes back like that. Who knows? I think it still looks pretty good. Regardless, it looks pretty decent for how long we've been at this. Okay, so there's one other thing I want to do is right now I'm seeing on e either side of the bird, I'm actually seeing both the bottom and the top. It's, it's the same. I actually have a separate top and bottom for this bird. And I made these, so I have wing left and wing right. And the they should be named wing top and wing bottom. Okay, I'm going to rename that because this is the wing bottom here. So I'm going to call this wing bottom. 
and then this oh wing bottom comp okay and then wing top comp so that makes more sense now because they're actually not right and left they were initially when i first started but then i realized i could do this is have a top wing and a bottom wing okay so if I want to actually use a bottom wing, oops, let's go here. If I want to actually use a bottom wing here, what I can do is bring in, oh, actually, I am using the bottom wing. So as you can see, I'm bringing the, I need to bring in the top wing. I can bring that in and just disappear it so I'm not looking at it because I want Freeform Pro to reference it as a flip side object. So when this wing comes down, I want to look see this. So what I can do is let's just go into the effect controls here come down a little bit and there is a backside controls and what I can do is actually bring in the wing top now it's really important that your wing top is the exact same alpha channel and shape as the wing bottom I didn't make mine that way so what I had to do is create a nested composition where I overlaid them both on top of each other as you can see they don't exactly line up there's some other things here when that's off, what you'll see on the actual comp is you'll get white things. So let's just zoom in really quick. You see all that white stuff happening? That's because the alpha channel doesn't line up perfectly. So what you need to do is make sure that they line up properly. So you either draw them so they line up perfectly, or and this is sloppy. You can see I've got some scrappy little lines over here. Because this bird was not designed for this specifically, I just took a bird that was designed for a cutout project and turned it into an animation. So which is sort of awesome that you can actually do that in After Effects. So as you can see here, it works a lot better if they line up perfectly. And the wing's moving so much, it's not going to be really scrutinized at a really high detail level. There's one last thing I did, which we'll explore, which is the actual displacement map. For your displacement map, you can use anything. So if I go into the actual wing here that has the Freeform Pro on it, you can add displacement mapping. And I'm going to, I'll just take an existing project here, an existing layer. And what I can do is I can add a displacement to it. So you can see that looks pretty terrible, mostly because it was not designed for displacement mapping, that image that was designed as a drawing. But you can see that I'm actually creating some pretty wild stuff right off the bat. But what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I used for displacement map. I don't want to go through the whole process of making it but you can see what I used and I'll just, I'll just break it down really quickly. So I've got this layer here and this is what I use for my displacement map. And I'll show you in a second how I made it and how it works. So I'll just show you, let's just apply it. Hopefully it lines up properly. Okay. So we're going to use that. We're going to use this bottom layer here, the displacement comp as a displacement map and we'll bump it out. Hopefully it works. There you go. So you can see I'm getting some really nice curve to that wing. It's probably a bit too extreme, but it's pretty awesome because now it's got the bird's got a bit of a shoulder. The wing has some nice curve to it, so let's just render that out. And that is no longer just a flat surface that has been curved in one dimension or in two dimensions. It's a it's a very rounded surface there. And you can play with your displacement map and make it look even better. But what this does is create a nice shoulder so I don't have that weird paper, flat paper look, which is so common in After Effects. Um, but I, we did it that quickly. You can't do that anything near that quickly in a 3D program. Okay, so how did that displacement map work? I'm going to go in here. Now, there's not a lot going on here. It may look like there's a lot, but there isn't. Essentially, what I have is I have the original wing layer. So let's just, I'm going to turn off that background. And I just tinted it to perfect black. So what that does is essentially nothing. So if we go into the comp here, when you have a perfectly black layer, there is no displacement happening at all because black is zero displacement, white is 100% displacement. So if we were to go and let's say convert this to white, or let's turn it to black and white, and we go back into here, we can see that we've caused all kinds of messes to happen, all right? And actually, let's let's do this. As I go into this other layer, I can, let's turn this to gray and you'll see it's gone down and then to black, it's down to zero. So this very basic concept can create a whole world of possibilities with how you can work with displacement maps. 
So the next thing I did is I actually created this fuzzy little layer and I've got it using a track mat. But what it is, is it's just a white solid. It's a white solid. There's really nothing that's special to it. If I turn off the mask, it's just a big white solid. And then I drew a mask over top of it and made the mask really fuzzy. So if we just enable the mask here. So I made this shape and I just have it like this. Let's take a look at what, what's happening. Now you can see there's a whole bunch of weird little edges happening and flashes. You see these like weird little uh, edges here. The reason that's happening is because along this edge, it's not going to perfect black for starters. So if I put this black in, that will help eliminate all those little spikies. But you can also see now that there's this really distorted long edge here. The reason that's happening is because it's not reaching perfect black by the time it hits the edge of the wing. So I've got this white bloom on top of this. So at the edge of the real wing, there's more of a gray at the edge than an actual black. So it's making the wing stick up. So what I did is I just duplicated this layer here, which was the actual wing. I just duplicated that layer and created an alpha mat out of it so that when I turn this guy on, it was contained inside the actual wing. So the last thing I did, I'm just gonna delete this guy. The last thing I did was actually used a matte choker. Now the matte choker, if you go into effects, is just under, I believe it's under matte, and it's just matte choker, it's a simple choker. And what I did with this is this, this actually chokes off the matte around the object. So you can actually trim edges down on something. So I can trim this so that there's a perfect black edge here and then it gradiates in here, okay? And that is affecting the whole thing. So if we go back into the composition, I don't get that weird edge anymore. I get a nice curve that actually goes to that. But you can see I'm still getting those spikies and that's only because I don't have this black layer turned on. Let's go back here. And now the wing is in fantastic shape. So that's essentially how I did the wing. And really you just duplicate that process. You can, you can literally flip the wing if you want. I'll show you this really quickly, how to duplicate the actual wing. So there we go. And you wanna do this before you do a ton of animation. So how can we flip this wing and actually duplicate it? It's a slightly involved process. So let's do this. I'm gonna duplicate this whole, this layer here, and we're gonna call this, rename this to wing left. And then this one to wing right, okay? I'm gonna open up the animation properties by pressing U. I'm gonna get back to the zero frame. And then what I wanna do really quickly for my left wing is first I'm gonna put my right wing below because my left wing is my front wing. And then what I'm gonna do is just pull this off this position, the Z position out a little bit of the actual left wing so it's a bit forward. So maybe let's put it to negative 150. And then I'm gonna put the right wing to, let's open its 3D transform controls and put it to 150. So now they should be, whoops, I did rotation, not translation, zero, sorry, 150, okay. So now the wings are spaced apart. And as you can see, they're both flapping in unison, which isn't exactly what we wanna do here. Okay, so now the, the wings are actually offset and they're moving in unison with each other. And what we need to do is figure out where to flip them so that they're exactly opposite to one another. So you can experiment. There's a number of ways you can do this. I'm gonna try flipping out on the Y axis. Let's see what happens here. This seems to be working. So I've done a negative on the Y, except now they're coming up and down at the wrong times. Okay, so they're backwards. So what I can do to fix this is go into my X rotation, and when I'm at this position, and this is why you don't wanna do all your wing flaps right in the beginning, when I'm at this position, I actually want my X to be up here. So we'll put this to 180, and then at this position, this is fine, and this position, I want my wing to be at zero. And then on the way back up, it should be fine, and then in the last position will be wrong, and that should be 180. Easy, fixed. Now, the only other problem with this wing is we have the top side on the bottom and the bottom on the top, which won't actually work for us. And we can't just change 
the backside controls, we actually have to bring in the other wing. So we have the wing top comp, and now we need the actual wing bottom comp in here as well. And these are just for side referencing. So now what I can do is if you go into this right wing, and we go here, and let's try, let's try putting the bottom on. So we've now put the bottom on, but we still have the problem that this wing is showing the bottom on top. That's because it's actually the bottom wing. When we look at the actual source name, we're playing with the wing bottom. So we can just swap this as well. So go into project, grab wing top, or your top wing or whatever. And I'm just going to alt click and drag it here. And there you go. Now what's happened is we've flipped it successfully. If that seems a little weird, go back and play it in slow motion. And I promise you it will all make sense. So now... We have two wonderful wings flapping away. Just have a look at these. Okay, there we go. We now have two flapping wings. And this is how I started everything. I did not start with a whole bunch of different flaps and everything. I started with this one flap and all of the rest of the character was actually based off the movement of these wings. And then what I did, afterwards is you can actually you have this this one flying cycle so I'm just clear the cache again what you can do just copy I'm pressing control C and pasting and I'll paste it again and paste it again and I can do the same thing here copy paste paste okay so now I have I wish these weren't showing they're really annoying Okay, so now I have, um, okay, and one more time. I'm going to copy and paste this one more time. So as you can see, copy and paste. So now I have these wing flaps repeating. Let's have a look in the actual composition. You can see that my wing flaps keep repeating and keep repeating. What I can do now is because I, I have these sort of loops happening, I can grab a section of the loop. So let's grab this one. I want to make sure I have both selected when I'm doing that. So I'm going to change the speed of some of the flapping, but I want the wings to sort of line up in the beginning. So I'll alt click and drag here. And then we'll pull this back so that it's kind of lined up sort of properly. There you go. It's roughly middle. You don't have to be too precious about it. It is an animal. It doesn't always fly perfectly. Maybe these two flaps are a little bit. So, oops, make sure you select both to try to, try to keep things lined up initially. And then afterwards, you throw things out of sync a little bit. So I'm just going to all click and drag that there. I like to keep one raw wing always, like one raw flap as reference, so that once I've messed everyone up, if I've screwed something up, I can just delete it and redo it. Let's just have a look. We'll have a couple of, if you watch this, I don't want to go and render it, but you'll have a fast flap, and then you'll have a slower flap. And then what you can also do is go in here and grab this little chunk here and maybe move it over a little bit so that the wings aren't perfectly lined up all the time. So maybe one's arriving a little bit sooner than the other. And this just helps add an organic nature, nature to your bird, okay? Maybe it's turning. If birds are turning, they tilt a little bit. Okay, so that's it. Awesome. I'll leave this composition in here for you so that you can actually play with it. So I'll name this uh, Wing Setup Example, okay? And that'll just be in the project. I'm going to put this out here. Actually, I'll make a folder in here. I'm going to create a folder called Wing Setup Example. And I'm going to put everything in there. Okay, and this wing top comp, that should stay in the Rocket D comps. Wing top comp, wing bottom, yeah. Okay, so you guys can play with that. Uh, just mess around and, and try to you know, try different flaps. Or, and if you want, try your own wings. You know, make some of your own wings and play around. But just make sure that those alpha channels line up. If you are interested to see how the rest of this bird was put together, as well as how we did the particle effects for the snow and rocket, Make sure you check out the other Rocket D tutorial videos. If you like what ED Films is doing and want to stay up to date on the latest developments and tutorials, please show your support by liking us on Facebook.